Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how numbers, how integers actually, are represented in the computer's memory. Uh, so, um, this, this lecture is kind of optional if you're following through this C++ tutorial, video by video. And uh, if you are, congratulations on getting this far, by the way. Uh, so, if this subject doesn't interest you, you can definitely live without knowing this. But for those who are interested, I wanted to include this video because this is it's, it's kind of interesting, actually. So I'll tell you the most important bits first, and then if you want to start watching, uh, you, you can do so without it wrecking your computing career or anything. Uh, so I've got a little program here, and um, I've created a char. So it's a signed char because values are signed by default in C++. And I've set it equal to the, actually the maximum value that you can fit in a char. And I've output that value and incremented it. Uh, so if we put the maximum value that we can in some primitive type and increment that, C++ won't warn us. It won't, it won't give us an error. It won't even give us a warning, I shouldn't think, because um, it just doesn't check. It trusts you to know what you're doing. So you have to be aware of roughly, at least, the maximum values that you can fit in integer types, especially with this really small types, especially with char, where you can only fit 127 in there. So if we increment 127 and output it again, we actually end up with minus 128, which is actually the most minimum value, the smallest value, uh, or the most negative value, if you like, that you can fit in, an, in a signed char. Now you notice that um, We've got plus 127, but minus 128. And the basic reason for that, we are going to go into it in detail, but the basic reason is that you have to represent the zero in there. So you can think of the positive uh, values as ranging from zero to 127, although zero isn't really positive or negative, but we have to represent it in, in that memory. And the negative values go from minus one to 128. So it's basically because the zero is taking up a space in, in the uh, in this sequence that the maximum positive value is one less than you might expect on the basis of the most negative value. And this is the same for all the integer types in C++. I just picked char because it's easy to deal with because it's so small. So um, how exactly do we represent integers in the computer's memory? Well, first of all, let's, let's have a look at uh, this whole maximum and minimum value thing a bit. So if we imagine that we have, um, let's imagine that we've got just three bits. So let's say three bit system. And uh, the, the most maximum value that you could sign, that, that you could store in, a, in an, um, an unsigned three bit value so if, if we're not interested in negative numbers, just positive ones, the biggest value that you could get in there would be got by setting all of the bits to one. We can only set each bit to zero or one. So if we set them all to one, then you'd expect that to be the biggest value that you could get in three bits. And that equals in this case, well, we've got, this is the least significant bit we call it because it represents how many ones we've got, either zero or one. This is the most significant bit, which represents, in this case, how many fours we've got, either zero fours or one four. So this is one plus one times two plus one times four. So that's four plus two plus one, which is seven. And uh, that actually equals um, two. It equals two to the power of, uh, of, of uh, three. Yeah, that's right, two to the power of three. So two times two times two, negative one. So um, that's the same as, so to the power of just basically means how many times you multiply the number by itself. So two to the power of three is two times two times two, three times over, which equals eight. We subtract one, we get seven. So that's that's equal, That's that's how you can calculate the maximum unsigned value for any particular type if you know how many bits it uses. So if we've got eight bits, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that's the maximum value you can store in a byte, for example, a, an unsigned char. 
that's going to be equal to um, 2 to the power of 8 minus 1. And 2 to the power of 8 is 256, so minus 1, we get 255. Now, what, what about if you want to have signed values in there? Well, one, one thing that you might imagine doing is um, you could say, OK, well, we'll keep the most significant bit, for example, uh, to represent the sign. So we could say, OK, let, let's say that a zero for the most significant bit means that it's a positive number and a one which looks a bit like a minus sign turned on turned on its you know turned on its um, edge um, we could say that that means it's negative so any, any number that starts with zero we say it's positive any number that starts with one we say it's negative so it's just a sign bit and um, and the rest of it is the actual number if we did that we would have one less bit to represent the um, the, the actual number itself. So we could imagine in such a system that the maximum value we could store, let's say in three bits, would be 2 to the power of 2 minus 1, which would just be 3. Or um, the maximum value that we could store in eight bits, if it's going to be signed and we need to keep one bit for the sign, is now going to be 2 to the power of 7 here, which is 128 minus 1 which will be 127. But as, as we saw, in fact, the maximum value that we can store in this chart it, it is 127, but we're managing to somehow to get to minus 128 with the most negative value. And that's, uh, that's to do with the way the number is actually stored. So let, let's have a look and think about this a bit more carefully. Let, let's keep with this system. The most obvious thing to do is, is that we say, OK, the most significant bit, this one, is the sign. So therefore, 0, 0, 0, that's 0 in decimal. 0, 0, 1, which gives us 1. 0, 1, 0, that's 2. 0, 1, 1, that's 3. Um, if we add 1 to that, we get 1, 0, 0. So we're saying this is negative now because it's got a 1 here. So now we'd have to say that this equals minus 0. And then we go, we go to 1, 0, 1, which we could say equals minus 1. 1, 1, 0 equals minus 2, and 1, 1, 1 equals minus 3. So the idea is, is that you just look at the, the bits after the first one, and that's the number, and then the first bit is just a sign. That's the most obvious thing that you could do. But the problem is, this system, which isn't used by any computer, any computer that I've heard of, um, this system it doesn't let you do arithmetic e um, easily at all. So uh, let, let's imagine that we want to add up, um, let's say, 1 and minus 1. Let's try that. So 0, 0, 1 is 1. And add, up, add to it minus 1, which is 1, 0, 1. I'll put zeros for the answer to start with. So this is 1, and we want to add negative 1 equals. Now binary arithmetic works the same as decimal arithmetic or hexadecimal or whatever you like, but we're most familiar with decimal. If you've got um, like 1 plus 1 here, we have to add up the, the rightmost column first. That's like adding 9 and 1 in the decimal system. The answer is 0 and you have to carry a 1. So um, this gives a 0 in this column, carry the 1. So 0 plus 0 plus the carried 1 is 1. And then for the, this column, 0 plus 1 is 1. And what's this equal to? 1, 1, 0. It's minus 2. So we, we should have got 0. So, minus, so plus 1 added to minus 1 should be 0. But we've got the wrong answer. So this system is rubbish. <laughs> and that's why it's not used anywhere. But um, we can tweak it a bit. Um, if we tweak it a little bit, we can make um, answers, we can make arithmetic a lot more easy to do in this system. So it's a system called one's complement, which again isn't used in many modern computers, but um, it's a much better system. So in one's complement, we keep this almost the same as it currently is, but we say that this, um, what would be the most positive value if it was unsigned, 
we're going to say that that equals minus 0. And then we're going to make this minus 1. This is going to be minus 2. This is going to be minus 3. Um, so we, we've got still the negative numbers have a 1 uh, for the most significant bit. Positive numbers have, have a 0 for the most significant bit. We've just moved the negative numbers around a bit, put them in different places. And we, we've got a minus 0 here as well. But we had a minus 0 to start with anyway, even in this naive system. Uh, now things work out a lot better. Let's try this. So if we add 1, 0, 0, 1, which is 1, plus minus 1, 1, 1, 0, which is minus 1, equals... Let's do that. So 1 plus 1 is 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. It gives us 1, 1, 1, which equals minus 0, which equals 0. So that's the right answer. So 1's complement um, is a system of storing uh, sign numbers in, um, in some bits that allows you to do arithmetic much more easily. Now there is a bit of a complication sometimes because let's take a look at what happens if you add, let's say, 0, 1, 1, which is 3, to uh, minus 2, 1, 0, 1. Let's try that. So we're going to add 3 to minus 2 and of course we expect to get 1. I'm going to put a zero actually at the beginning of these. So of course as with decimal you can put a zero at the beginning of a number and it doesn't make any difference to it. Like 007 still means 7 you know, in the decimal system so we can do that. Let's try that. Um, so 1 plus 1, well that gives us 0 and we have to carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus the carried 1 again gives us 0 and we have to carry the 1. 0 plus 1 plus the carried 1 again gives 0 and carry the 1. And now we've got, to put, we've got to put a 1 there. Now there's a rule here. This is the wrong answer, clearly. But um, there's a rule that we can apply to fix that, which is that if we get an overflow bit on the left here, we have to add it to the right here. So let's do that. Add overflow bit to um, right. So we take that off there and we add it here. And so that would be 0, 0, 0 here. 0, 0, 0 plus 1 equals 0, 0, 1. And then we get 0, 0, 1. It's the right answer because 3 added to minus 2 is 1. And 0, 0, 1, of course, is 1. So if you look at this 1's complement system, it works. It works fine. But we've got, um, well, two complications at least. And we, we haven't looked at multiplication or uh, subtraction or whatever. But I, I believe that they, they, as far as I know, they work really well in this system. But the difficulty is that, firstly, we've got two representations of 0. So we've, rep we've, we've wasted kind of one place in the system by representing 0 twice when we could have stuffed another number in there. Another deficiency of it is that we've got to do this extra thing of adding the overflow bit. If we get an overflow like that, we've got to add it on to the right hand to the least significant bit in order to get the right answer and only then does it actually work. And that's why we don't use one's complement in modern desktop computers. What we use is a system called two's complement. So let's take a look at two's complement. I'm going to um, copy this table because most of it's the same. Let's type this out here. Now two's complement, um, so these numbers are all the same, 0, 1, 2, 3. Whoops. So 0, 1, 2, 3. But we say that 1, 1, 1, that's going to be equal to minus 1. And then we're going to number backwards from there. So again, any negative number starts with a 1. Remember, we're just using 3 bits here for convenience, but it's the same idea in 8 bits. Any number that starts with a 0 is going to be positive. And you can see that in this system, the, the most negative value is actually 1 less than negative of the most positive value, if you see what I mean. So we can go up to 3 for the positive values, but we can go down to minus 4. That's what we see here. We see that we're going up to 127, 
but we can go down to minus 128. Uh, so um, that's because the computer is actually using this system that I'm about to show you here, two's complement. Now the, ad the advantage of doing this, so another advantage is that we've only got one zero in here, so we haven't kind of wasted a place. But also it turns out that arithmetic is actually easier to do than with one's complement. So let's try, for example, uh, we'll try to start, we'll start with, let's try adding two to minus two, one, one, zero. Let's try that. What we get is, uh, we should get zero. So if we add zero and zero, we get zero. One plus one is zero and carry the one, just like adding nine and one in decimal. Zero plus one plus the carried one gives us zero when we carry the one again. So we end up with one overflowing. But the difference here is that instead of adding the one, the overflowed bit, at the overflowed most significant bit, instead of adding that to the least significant bit, like with one's complement, all we have to do is discard overflow, discard the overflow bit, and we get to zero, 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 which is the right answer. So we still have a funny thing going on with the bits, but we, all we have to do is ignore them, so we don't have to add them anywhere. So um, it's, it's easier, addition is easier than in one's complement. I'm not going to get into uh, subtraction or division or multiplication, but apparently they're all also very easy to do in two's complement. Let's, let's take another example just for fun. So if we take, um, I don't know, let's take, uh, let's take three, no, let's take one or two. I'll start with two, okay. Let's do two and minus three, which should give us minus one. So this is two and um, Let's add minus three, one, zero, one, negative three. Then we get from that um, one, one, one. It's quite easy to see the answer. We're just adding ones and noughts in each case. And one, one, one is minus one, right answer. So there we go. Um, and yeah, adding two positive numbers or adding two negative numbers, it works just the same. The only thing you have to bear in mind is that if you get an answer that's too big to fit in your type, then you are going to get um, an overflow. It's, it's not going to fit in three bits or eight bits or whatever. But this system, two's complement, is the way that we represent numbers in the computer's memory because it, it's, it doesn't waste any values. There's only one zero and um, it makes arithmetic really natural to do. We just have to discard some overflow bits. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. My plan now for this course is that um, I thought of, I, there's only one more thing that I can think of at the moment that is really pressing to fit in a beginner's course on C++. That's static variables, so we're going to take a look at that probably in the next tutorial. And after that I've developed a, um, a rather nice plasma explosion simulation program and I'm going to show you how that to make how to make that in the rest of this beginners tutorial so um, that's it for this time and until next time happy coding